Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic of our discussion today is asthma in pregnancy and I have taken help from the uh, talk article about asthma in pregnancy. So what is the prevalence of asthma in pregnancy that is written in the talk article 4 to 12 percent. Overall 4 to 10, uh, 12 percent of the pregnant women are affected by asthma on the average uh, 10 percent and it is the most common chronic condition in the pregnancy, chronic respiratory condition in the pregnancy. Uh, pregnancy worsens asthma control in one third of the women, improves it in one third and has no, if, uh, no effect on one third. So there is one third formula. So where asthma deteriorates in 60 percent of the cases and mild asthma in 10 percent of the cases, this is also a very important point for MCQs. And what is the suitable method of induction? That is PGE2. Uh, it can be used as it will not affect the asthma severity. Um, in some occasion it can be used it is not absolutely contraindicated so what is the definition of asthma asthma is basically chronic inflammatory disease of the airway which is characterized by intermittent episode of wheeze shortness of breast chest tightness and cough which are often worse at night now this is a box two uh, of the talk article about asthma in pregnancy uh, in which we are shown the main differential diagnosis in pregnant women with the dyspnea so uh, when a patient comes with the dyspnea, we have to keep these uh, differentials in our mind. She might have uh, anxiety, hyperventilation, dysfunctional breathing, respiratory disease, which include asthma, chest infection, and or pneumonia, thromboembolic disease, interstitial lung disease, for example, sarcoid, uh, or second due to connective tissue disorder, pneumothorax, amniotic fluid embolism. She may be suffering from cardiac diseases as well, like arrhythmia, ischemic heart disease, cardiomyopathy, or endocrine disease like diabetes mellitus, leading to hyperventilation in the setting of acute ketoacidosis and acute thyrotoxicosis. She might having she might have uh, hematological disorders like chronic anemia and acute hemorrhage. She might be suffering from renal disease like hyperventilation to compensate for metabolic acidosis secondary to acute renal failure. And what are the factors, uh, physiological factors affecting asthma in pregnancy? Those include increase in free cortisol level, which may protect her against the inflammatory triggers. Okay, and um, other physiological factors include the increase in bronchodilating substances such as progesterone, which may improve the airway responsiveness. An increase in bronchoconstricting substance, substances such as the prostaglandin F2 alpha, which may produce uh, promotes the airway constriction. Placental 11 beta hydroxysteride dehydrogenase type 2 decreased activity is associated with increase in placental cortisol concentration and low birth weight. Now, placental gene expression of inflammatory cytokine may promote low birth weight. Modification of cell mediated immunity may influence the maternal response to infection and inflammation. Now, this is the stepwise approach of management of the patient with asthma. Patients should start treatment at uh, the steps most appropriate to the initial severity of the asthma, check concord uh, concord uh, concordance and reconsider diagnosis if the response to treatment is unexpectedly poor. Okay, so step one is mild intermittent asthma in which we uh, offer inhaled short acting beta 2 agonist as required. Then in a step two regular preventer therapy in which we add inhaled steroid 200 to 800 microgram per day. 400 microgram is an appropriate starting dose for many patients and start at the dose of inhaled steroid appropriate to the severity of the disease. Okay, so uh, my purpose of this presentation is not just to read everything I am going to explain explain it uh, as well. In step one, first of all, when the patient comes with asthma, we offer her salbutamol. Okay, salbutamol is actually, actually the short acting beta 2 agonist. And uh, if after some times, uh, after some uh, period of time, if she comes and she says that um, my breathlessness has not been improved, so what we will do as a first step, we will add the uh, the inhaled steroids. We will add inhaled steroid along with the short acting beta two agonist. Now, but that would be uh, the low dose. Okay, four hundred microgram, two hundred to eight hundred microgram, but uh, four hundred microgram is the appropriate starting dose. That is the average of 200 to 800 and start at the dose of inhaled steroid appropriate to the severity of the disease means from 200 to 800 depending upon severity we will start the dose uh, but the main thing in step two is that we just add inhaled steroid okay so now the patient is still breathless we will go to step three
okay so step 3 name is basically initial add on therapy first step was that mild intermittent asthma second is regular preventer therapy in which we added low dose steroid third step is initial add on therapy in in the add on therapy along with the uh, short acting steroid and um, short acting beta 2 agonist and short inhaled steroid we add on the long acting beta 2 agonist as well so that is what it is called that is why it is called the uh, add on therapy okay so we add inhale long acting beta 2 agonist and secondly we assess the control of the asthma good response to long acting beta 2 a uh, long acting beta 2 agonist we will continue the long acting beta 2 agonist and benefit from long acting beta 2 agonist but the control still inadequate uh, continue long acting beta 2 agonist and in increase the inhale steroids dose to 800 microgram per day if not already on this dose and no response to long acting beta 2 agonist stop long acting beta 2 agonist and increase inhale steroid to 800 microgram per day if the control still uh, inadequate institute a trial of another therapy leukotriene receptor antagonist or sr uh, theophylline okay so that is how we just go to step three in step four persistent poor control we consider the trial of increasing inhale steroids to 200 microgram per day okay so initially we started with the low dose and then we will increase it to high dose and then addition of the four drug like leukotriene receptor antagonist sr theophylline and beta 2 agonist tablet we will add on that okay so in the fourth step basically we in, uh, added the uh, inhale steroid but in the high dose as compared to step two in step two step four both are for adding steroid but in step two we just uh, added a low dose inhale steroid in step four we added high dose inhale steroid up to 200 microgram per day okay and in step four there is addition of another drug as well four drug like leukotriene receptor antagonist okay like uh, sr theophylline beta 2 agonist tablets okay beta 2 agonist uh, was in inhaler form in step one in step four it was in the tablet form okay so uh, after that step five the last step okay in the last step use daily steroid tablet in the lowest providing adequate um, control okay in the step five uh, five we will just add steroid tablet like prednisolone okay uh, we will add that and maintain the high dose of high inhaled steroid we already added uh, it in the four steps so we will maintain high dose of inhaled steroid at four 2000 microgram per day and consider other treatment to minimize the use of steroid tablets okay so in order to minimize the use of steroid tablets we will consider other treatment as well and um, refer the patient for specialist care if the uh, there is not adequate control like what we will have to do after that we, whether we will <clears throat> have to use the nebulizer or whatever depending upon severity uh, if uh, we need further management, we will refer to the specialist, care respiratory specialist, okay? So that was very important chart. Now assessing the severity of uh, an asthma attack, we will divide asthma into mild, moderate, and severe, but um, 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 that is just a common um, classification. Uh, another classification, I will explain this in the next slide in which we um, divide the patient uh, we, uh, according to acute exacerbation. Um, of asthma we divide the patient into uh, three main groups so that is just the um, living according to severity like in mild case we have the cough soft wheeze minor difficulty in breathing and no difficulty um, in speaking in sentences and in moderate uh, asthma we have persistent cough loud wheeze obvious difficulty in breathing and patient but patient is able to speak short sentences okay in mild um, uh, there's no difficulty in speaking sentences and in uh, moderate patient is able to speak in short sentences but not long sentences and in severe asthma patient is very depressed and anxious and there is the gasping of breath gasping for breath and patient is able to speak only a few gasping words in only one breath and patient is pale and sweaty and may have blue lips now the severity of acute exacerbation is divided into three groups in uh, uncontrolled asthma in adults 
uh, speech must be normal with a pulse rate of less than uh, 110 beats per minute and respiratory rate of 25 per minute. Peak flow should be more than 50% of the predicted or personal best. And treatment involved the nebulized salbutamol molar terbutaline failure to respond should prompt refer to the hospital. Otherwise, the normal treatment can be stepped up and a course of oral steroids may be prescribed. Acute severe attack, these patients will not be able to complete sentences, will have pulse rate of more than 110 beats per minute and respiratory rate of more than 25 per minute and peak flow rate of less than 50 percent predicted or personal best. Acute treatment involved oxygen nebulizer and, uh, and oral pernisolone. Those not responding well should be transferred to the hospital with an aminophylline infusion. Now coming to the life-threatening asthma, this is the most uh, serious of the asthma exacerbation which is characterized by a silent chest, cyanosis, bradycardia or peak flow of less than 33% of the predicted or personal best. Immediate hospital treatment is necessary with oxygen, nebulizer, intravenous theophylline, or steroids or intravenous hydrocortisone. Now status asthmaticus management. Oxygen to maintain the saturation above 94%. Inhale or nebulize anticholinergics such as the apropropium bromide, intravenous corticosteroids, aminophylline, and intravenous magnesium sulfate. Now, management of the asthma exacerbation in pregnancy, asthma exacerbation and managed as per BTS science guideline, which includes oxygen, oral corticosteroid, nebulized beta 2 agonist, or other additional supportive care dependent upon the severity. Now, what are the effects of pregnancy on the asthma. In severe disease, the asthma control is more likely to deteriorate in 60% than in mild cases, 10%. That is very important. Exacerbation are most common between 24 to 36 weeks of pregnancy and respiratory tract infection. Viral infections were uh, the most uh, frequent trigger of exacerbation in 34% of cases. It is followed by poor adherence to inhaled corticosteroid therapy in 29% of the cases. Now, effects of the asthma on pregnancy, maternal Association between the asthma and hypertension during pregnancy, airway may be a predictor of preeclampsia, higher frequency of uh, cesarean section and fetal intrauterine growth restriction or um, low birth weight. Okay, so that was something about talk article about asthma and pregnancy. And uh, a little bit I have taken 